Thank you for watching NMH at One, where we highlight the news making headlines in the land of the brave and beyond, ranging from current affairs, community stories, sports and economic news. In the news today, over 15,000 jobs to be created, born freezes, Rennie's accounts, Shortage of ports hits Namibia amid South Africa ban. I am Glenora Shipura and this is NMH at One. In our midday news update, residents from Oikokolola village in Sandy constituency held a peaceful demonstration yesterday, citing a crisis of access to clean water and the destruction of Mahango fields by elephants in the area. The residents further claim that they do not have clinic, no network tower and electricity. Omosati Regional Governor Eugenius Njala is expected to receive the petition from the residents. Let's take a look. Remember to engage with these stories on our social media throughout the broadcast. Visual news coming up after the break. My name is Justice Shehama. I am Namibian. Hello, ex Damon Stevens. I am a Namibian in Netherlands. Play dance in New Orleans in America. In Heidelberg in beautiful Toronto, Canada. Currently part of. So I'm currently based in South Carolina in the US. Let's take a look at our visual news. DBLO Limited and its subsidiary Reptile Mineral Resources and Exploration PTY Limited have made a generous donation of training equipment to the Namibian Institute of Mining and Technology in Arandes. Ralph Bussell, the executive director of NIMD, reiterated their dedication to equipping students with the necessary skills for practical careers across different industries. Right, I'm Raoul Bussel, Executive Director of NIMT. I would love to thank Recta for this generous donation. The donation is really valued a lot to us as an institution, but not only to us as an institution, but also to the Namibian nation and the nation in general. Because without this donation, we will not be able to achieve what we want to achieve. But this will definitely bring us a lot uh, successes in the future. I will not go into depth in the detail of what the equipment meant to us, but I will rather give my colleague, Mr. Davidita, the opportunity to give you uh, the in depth. Okay, my name is Ita David. I'm responsible for training the boiler makers. We are very uh, happy for the donation that you got for from uh, Reptile Uranium, Reptile Miner, sorry. So they gave us a compressor. This compressor we're going to use it for cutting steel. We use it with the with the plasma. Plasma is more. You can you can use the, uh, what the plasma to cut steel. You can also use oxy, oxy as oxygen and acetylene, but oxygen and acetylene they are very expensive. So we better use the, the plasma the, because the plasma cut all the 
metals that conduct uh, electricity. So it's more economical because with with uh, oxyacetylene you only use the uh, you only cut steel, uh, mild steel, different type of steel. But with with plasma you cut all the steel. Rector, we are very thankful for your love of a Namibian child. Uh, we are very happy. On behalf of a Namibian child, we are very happy with Mr. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>Over the last 18 years, Minister Pepper has invested over uh, 27 billion Namibian dollars. And Pepper is committed in this COP season to investing over 1.6 billion Namibian dollars. I use those numbers, Minister, to assure you that when we discuss sustainability, it is not in the light of us handing over a programming to you, it is in the spirit of joint responsibility and joint accountability as we move past 2030. Elia Ngurare, Deputy Executive Director of Water Supply and Sanitation, said that the Ministry of Agriculture will venture into food production on a small scale by drilling boreholes for some communities to enable them to produce food. He added that the ministry is constructing 129 earth dams this financial year. Gurare was speaking at a recent roundtable discussion on the importance of water at Enana. We are now going to venture into food production on a small scale. Uh, in other words, we can drill boreholes for some communities so that they can be able to produce food and thereby also create employment, especially for the unemployed young people that are in various uh, villages. The other aspect, finally, is the water harvesting. Ohangwena uh, and the Colorado can confirm we have received a list of epidemics that need to be rehabilitated, as well as new epidemics that need to be constructed. Uh, so now, in total, in this financial year, we are constructing about 129 epidemics, spanning from Monsati all the way up to Hangwena again as well as the and then we are also excavating some of the, um, the canals, like Etaka Canal, Etaka That brings us to the end of our visual news segment. President Hage Gingob said Namibia is looking forward to our partnership of equals with the European giants. An update on this story follows in the newspaper review segment. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia, when we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians sharing their stories. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6:30 p.m. and oneup2.com, and broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 
5.30 p.m. Republic Hain, Algamina Titan, Namibian Sun, and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na. Brave Namibia, for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. We now take a look at our daily newspapers. The Namibian Sun's front page reports that Denmark's Prime Minister Matt Fredriksen, who was in the country with her Dutch counterpart Mark Rutte yesterday, says the world is in a hurry for green hydrogen and Namibia must thus seize the opportunity to deliver on this front. In an unprecedented move, Denmark and the Netherlands, driven by Europe's energy needs, have united efforts to seize opportunities within Namibia's highly sought-after green hydrogen industry, aiming to address their energy challenges. On page 3, despite the current shortage of pork in Namibia, the number of formal pork producers in the country remains low, causing retailers and processors to source products from overseas markets the local demand for pork increased since the ban on imports from South Africa due to food and mouth disease outbreak in August 2022, and this has created a bigger than normal shortage of pork in the country. Namibia imported 608,365 kilograms of pork, while it exported 8,341 kilograms in May, according to the Mid Board of Namibia's Market Watch. Now, the top product imported was pork tails, while the top export product was hawk casings. Republican informs that 17 people were injured yesterday morning when a private vehicle belonging to a Swakop uranium employee collided with a minibus belonging to a contractor at the mine. The accident occurred amidst misty weather in Swakopmund. No fatalities were reported. On page three, the two American defendants on trial for the murder of Andre Heckmere exercise their right not to call any witness or submit evidence to the court. Marcus Thomas and Kevin Townsend will appear on the 21st of July for final arguments before judgment is delivered. On its front page, the Algamina Zeitung reports that the population of the free-ranging lions in Namibia is dwindling and the numbers of desert-adapted lions in the northwest of the country in particular have previously been identified as a concern by Namibia's Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. Despite this, three desert-adapted lions are now apparently to be released as part of a quota for trophy hunting in this region. On page 3 of the Algemeine Zeitung, the Namibian and German governments defended actions on the genocide issue. Both the Namibian and German governments recently responded to critical questions from the UN Special Rapporteurs on the proposed genocide agreement. Nama and Herero representatives had been properly involved in the dialogue. After the break, we continue with more newspaper review. Another exciting episode of Iron World Talk. We will at least be here and tell what we are about first. You are going to have We continue with our newspaper review. The Namibian newspaper reports that stateless and undocumented people living in the Kavango East and Kavango West regions have called on the government to speed up registering them, accusing the Rundu Regional Office of delaying the process. The two Kavango regions have the highest number of stateless and undocumented people in the country. On page 3, the Minister of Urban and Rural Development and the Shambuya Traditional Authority won an appeal against a high court judgment in which the official recognition of a traditional leader for the Shambuya community in Kavango East 
was set aside nearly two years ago. The then Minister of Urban and Rural Development, Peya Mushelenga, acted correctly when he refused to approve the designation of one of the candidates for the Shambuya leadership, Maria Haindaka, as the traditional leader of her community. Chief Justice Peter Shibute found in an appeal judgment delivered in the Supreme Court on Friday. On New Era's front page, there is a glimmer of hope for the unemployed as approximately 15,000 jobs in the public sector are anticipated to become available this year. These employment opportunities will arise from the security cluster, which encompasses the National Defense Force, National Correctional Services, and the Namibian Police. This is in addition to 13,000 temporary jobs expected to be created through the census by the Namibian Statistics Agency. On page 3, nearly 1,300 employees of Rennie retailers and other affiliated franchises across the country might not receive their June salaries after the Bank of Namibia froze the company's accounts. In an urgent application filed in the High Court, the company's NEMI Investments 104 CC, NEMI Investments 105 CC, Rennie Traders, Rundu Cash and Carry, Darni Traders, and Oshana Cash and Carry claim born on the 29th of March froze their accounts, which holds in excess 13.8 million Namibian dollars. Now, Market Watch reports that the latest high frequency data suggests that the Namibian economy will record a robust economic expansion on an annual basis in the first quarter of 2023, PSG said. The strong growth is mainly on the back of an increase in mining activities and the ongoing post-pandemic recovery in tourism. According to PSG, new vehicle sales accelerated by 19% year-on-year in the first quarter. Demand for new vehicles is back at pre-pandemic levels despite the recent rise in interest rates. Now, Bank of Namibia warns against the use of QZ asset management. More on this story in our economic news on the other side of the break. Newsprint Namibia is a web offset printing operation that specializes in the printing of newspapers and commercial inserts. We are the leaders in our industry with the highest quality print work and the shortest turnaround time from computer to print and delivery anywhere in the country daily. Newsprint was established mainly as a newspaper print company, but had to diversify its business to do commercial printing as required in the market. We print commercial inserts, previously printed in South Africa, in the shortest possible time. We, as an organization, also started printing workbooks for our education system and will also print textbooks for the Namibian market. For more information, please contact print at newsprint.com. Getting into our economic news, the Bank of Namibia assessed the business activities of QZ Asset Management following complaints by members of the public. QZ Asset Management is marketed as an online business that provides advisory and asset management services to individuals and institutional investors. It is required that QZ Asset Management's primary, it is rather reported that QZ Asset Management's primary goal is to build innovative portfolios that provide superior long-term investment returns by acquiring ownership in outstanding companies at attractive prices through its big data capabilities incorporated with artificial intelligence instead of analyzing stock markets. Now, according to its marketing material, the company matches investments dollar for dollar, which doubles its clients' assets under management, essentially doubling profits. Let's take a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades against the British pound at 23.21, against the euro at 19.88, and two Namibian dollars and 53 cents gets you one Chinese yuan. 
all stock remain the same on the NSX. Overall index went down 1.32%. Gold and Brent crude oil went up, Brent crude oil going 0.92%, trading at 76 US dollars and 87 cents per barrel. France offers Tunisia 25.8 million euros to help tackle migration. Stay with Animated One for an update on this story. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. Let's take a look at our news from across the continent. France will offer Tunisia 25.8 million euros to help it stop boats carrying migrants across the Mediterranean, French Interior Minister Gerald Darmain said during a visit to Tunisia yesterday. The money will pay for equipment and training and comes in addition. A Euros, sorry, European Union package that the EU, EU Commission president announced earlier this month to help Tunisia tackle a big rise in migrant departures. Perilous sea crossings, often on crowded, filmsy boats, have led to terrible toll of drownings, as well as a big increase in migrant arrivals in Italy this year, causing political ructions in Europe. Last week's sinking of a boat carrying hundreds of migrants from Libya to Greece underscored the risk of the crossing. Tunisian President Kais Said has said his country will not be a border guard for Europe, but he also announced a crackdown in February on sub-Saharan African migrants living in the country. We now take a look at our international news. Qatar is set to secure its second large gas supply deal with a Chinese state-controlled company in less than a year, source familiar with the deal told Reuters on Tuesday. Chinese National Petroleum Corporation and Qatar Energy are expected to sign a 27-year agreement later on Tuesday, under which China will purchase 4 million metric tons of LNG a year from the Gulf Arab state Two sources briefed on the matter told Reuters. Now, CNPC also will take an equity stake in the eastern expansion of Qatar's Northfield liquefied natural gas project. The source said the stake is the equivalent of 5% of one LNG train with a capacity of 8 million tons per year, one of the sources said. Now, after the break, we get into your sports news. Do stay tuned. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia, when we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians sharing their stories. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6:30 p.m. and oneup2.com, and broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5:30 p.m. Republican. Algemeine Zeitung, Namibian Sun, and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na. Brave Namibia, for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians.
Let's take a look at our local sports news. The Brave Warriors will today face probably one of their biggest matches yet when they clash against Burundi in a match that could usher them into next year's African Cup of Nations in Ivory Coast. The match starts at 3 p.m. and will be played at Benjamin Makapa National Stadium in Tanzania. The Colin Benjamin coach side is currently leading the standing with five points. Namibian sprinter Louise Segaria reached the final of the women's 200 meters on Sunday after winning heat one of her events at the 2023 Special Olympics World Games underway in Berlin, Germany. Now Segaria was the second and last Namibian athlete to compete on the day, outclassing her competitors as she clocked 30.56 seconds to cross the line first. Now the Cohen Feasball Club has put even more distance between itself and its rivals in the National A-League. After the third victory on the third day of competition in the Feasball League, it will be difficult for the competition to push CFC from the top of the table. We'll get into our international sports news shortly. Red Bull boss Christian Horner recognized after Sunday's landmark Canadian Grand Prix that his runaway Formula One leader could win every race this season. Estonian Annette Kontaviet, who reached a career high of, no, of number two in the world last year, said she is retiring at the age of 27 due to a degenerative back injury and will play her final tournament at Wimbledon next month. American Magnus Sheffield has been discharged from hospital after he was involved in a high-speed crash during stage 5 of the Tour de Suisse. Swiss Gino Meda was also involved in the crash as they descended from the Albula Pass and died age 26 on Friday. After the break, we'll get into the news highlights. Do stay with us. Welcome to MyDotNA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mostat. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. You are watching Enemy Chat 1 and here are the news highlights from today's broadcast. France will offer Tunisia 25.8 million euros to help it stop boats carrying migrants across the Mediterranean, French Interior Minister Gerald Darmanian said during a visit to Tunisia yesterday. Qatar is set to secure its second large gas supply deal with a Chinese state control company in less than a year, sources familiar with the deal told Reuters on Tuesday. The Brave Warriors will today face probably one of their biggest matches yet when they clash against Burundi in a match that could usher them into next year's African Cup of Nations in Africa coast. Those have been your highlights. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with Enemy at 1. Catching up on the latest news in Namibia, Africa and the world, ranging from current affairs, economic news, sports and international headlines. From me, Glenn Rashipura, until next time.